Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Marion Local High School, where tonight the home standing Flyers welcome in the Delta St. John Blue Jays. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Dave Bowen and our entire WLSN crew. Dave, we take a look at both these squads, and Marion Local comes in starting three seniors. They've got a chance to win an outright title. You take a look at Delta St. John's. They won a piece of the title, and they are led by a freshman, and he is a dandy. Cameron Elwer is very special, and you're right. Great night. Last regular season Friday night, Danny. It's great to be your wingman, and hello, high school basketball fans. But Cameron Elwer, you're right. The diaper dandy, the freshman, six-foot guard. He leads the MAC in scoring at 22 points per game. He is definitely going to be a focus for the Flyers this evening. Absolutely. You take a look at Delphi St. John's. They come into this game 15 and six, six and two on the year. And if they get a win, they're going to share the crown with Marion Local. And that's what they want to do. And Coach Elwer, I'm sure, has talked about the mental toughness that you have to have, the grit you have to have to come into this facility, this building, this gym, and compete. They know what it's all about. They're winners, but obviously, so are the Flyers. An outstanding season, 17 and four, and as you said, seven and one in the MAC. And Marion Local comes in. We have reports that Jack Kanapke will not start tonight. He's battling an injury. Will he play? We don't know that. We're going to have to wait and see. They're going to start seniors. It's senior night. If they win this game, Dave, MAC champions. MAC champions, and you're right. What a great opportunity, senior night. But there's a little emotion involved sure. with that. So. Uh, and they're out of rhythm a little bit with Kanapke not starting, but they won last Saturday night where he didn't play against Rushi. So Luke Pullman's going to start tonight. Luke Pullman, uh, Coach uh, Guttermiller talked about Pullman being one of the most improved players on this squad this year. It'll be exciting to see what he does starting the game and as he did last Saturday. But again, the Marion Local Flyers, you've got Jaden Mesher, who's one of the best three-point shooters in the league. And then you've got Tate Hess, the glue guy. And then you've got the big boy, Jack Kanapke, inside. Hopefully he'll play tonight, but they'll be prepared either way. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for tonight's game for the Delphi St. John's Blue Jays. As we said, they come in at 15-6, and 6-2 six, six and two in the league. They'll start number two, Landon Grothaus. He's a 5'10 senior at 11.7 a game. Number five, Nolan Schwinnen is a six-foot senior at 3.9 a game. Number 11, Cameron Elwer, the fantastic freshman, six foot, 21. 1.9 a game. He's the District 8 Player of the Year. Number 12, Austin Munter is a 5'11 junior at 2.9 a game. And number 33, Aaron Munter is a 6'2 junior, rounding out the starting five at 6.2 a game. The Jays are led by Coach Aaron Elwer. Take a look at the Marion Local Flyers. They come in at 17 and 4, 7 and 1 in the MAC. They are led by number four, Luke Pullman, a six-foot senior at 6.1 a game. Number 11, Jaden Mesher, a 6'2 senior at 12.9 a game. Number 12, Tate Hess is a 6'2 senior at 8.5 a game. Number 15, Brandon Ike is a 6'1 senior at 3.4. And rounding out the starting five, number 23, Austin Niekamp, the big man, 6'8 sophomore at 7.4 a game. So, partner, buckle up. I think we're in for a dandy. We are. It's just going to be Mac basketball at its best. It's You're going to have to... Make sure that you have the shoelaces on tight because it's going to be physical. And again, they're playing for a championship. And these two schools, they're used to doing that. Absolutely. When we come back, we'll have the tip off. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Marion Local High School, where tonight the Marion Local Flyers welcome in the Delphi St. John Blue Jays. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Dave Bowman. Excuse me, Dave Bowman. <laughs> Sorry about that, Dave. Our scoreboard is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken and Lima. Wapak and Delphi is called Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Dave, I'm going to turn it over to you. Tell the folks at home what these clubs need to do to get the win. Yeah, Delphi St. John's, they're going to need to rebound. They are outsized, obviously, inside a big play in that will be whether Kanapke is on the floor or not, but even then, they still will have to work hard on the boards at both ends. They're going to have to handle the physicality of that Marion local man-to-man -man defense, and then they got to play with confidence again. They're ready to do that, but sure, they sure. got to bring it to the table tonight in a championship game atmosphere. Marion local, they got to contest the three. They got to keep the John, St. John's off of the three point line and contest every shot. That is a variable weapon for St. John's. They left the three point line. And then 
chewing gum defense. Not only do they need to know where Cameron Eller is all the time, does the Flyers, but they also need to be aware of Landon Grothaus. Landon Grothaus is the second leading scorer for St. John's at 12 points per game. The 5'10 senior, he has had an outstanding year. He's dealing with a shoulder injury as well. He hurt it two weeks ago in the Crestview game, but he's back out there, again, showing that grit, grit mentality that he has all four years of playing high school basketball. And then offensively, Marion Local, they're really going to need to move the ball against that pack line defense that St. John's is so well known for. Got to snap the ball around, can't let it stick. If they have the ball stick, that's going to feed right into St. John's defensive game plan. Keep the ball moving, find cutters, find slashers, get the ball into Kanapke if he's on the floor. And if Nick Camp's playing in the post, get it into him too. But keep moving around the ball when it's on the block. Dave, I want to ask you a question before we get started here. What does St. John's need to do to come back against the height of Marion Local? Be fundamentally defensively. Check out hard. Maybe you don't get the rebound, but you make sure that either uh, Nick Camp or Kanapke, they do not get the rebound. Let your guards get in there and board. So this is Austin Nick Camp with the ball down low. And uh, the official, Steve Trout, on the call. We got first turnover of the night. Ball goes back to St. John's. He calls to carry our officiating crew, Paul Maffey, Steve Trout, and Daniel Frilling. First call of the game by Steve Trout. So this is Grothaus with the ball out top. He'll dribble, drives to the middle, takes it inside, and we've got a foul on the floor. So uh, Steve Trout, two, two quick calls tonight, so he's ready to go. <laughs> and again, these teams are evenly matched with their statistics. Uh, offensively and defensively, St. John's averages 52 points a game, Marion Local 53. Defensively, St. John's gives up 45. Marion Local leads the MAC, only giving up 42 points a game. Elwer triggers the ball into Landon Grothaus. Grothaus swings it back around, and Nolan Schwinnem will go back to Grothaus on the right side. This is Munter with the ball out top. He's guarded by <clears throat> Luke Pullman. Holman continues to stay on Munter. They'll swing it around the top. This is the Cam Elwer, the District 8 Player of the Year. Young man averaging almost 22 points a game. He is the leader for this team. This is Grothaus, dribble drive baseline. He's cut off by Kneekamp. They'll swing it back around. Up and under by Elwer, and a nice nifty move by the guard. Great patience by the Blue Jays offensively, and then great patience by Elwer right there. Pivots, and as you said, tear drops that one in over the defense on the left baseline. Makes it two to nothing on the Lee's famous recipe scoreboard. Jays lead quick here, 6.44 to go in the first quarter. Ike swings it back out to Tate Hess. Hess will swing it over to Pullman. Pullman dribble drive middle. They'll go back to Ike. Ike guarded out top by Munter. Back to Hess. Little short jumper from the foul line. Goes off the rim. Knee camp with the rebound. And they're going to get number 33 for Delta St. John's. That's Aaron Munter, the 6'2 junior. They're going to get him on the foul. Yeah, Aaron was focused on his man defensively. Did not know the shot went up. He actually tried to check his man out after he'd already rebounded. It got called for the foul. This is Mesher with the ball out top. He is a sniper from anywhere on the floor. When he gets the ball, you've got to close out on him. This is Brandon Ike. He'll try to go baseline. Back to Ike. Ike thought about shooting, goes to the middle. Back out to Austin Neekamp. Jays are playing some aggressive defense right now, Dave. Absolutely. That pack flying defense is in full force. I do like the patience of Marion Local getting it inside. Neekamp playing that block position uh, de offensively. That Kanapke usually does. There's a three from the right side, off the back iron. Rebound comes down. This is Cam Elwer with the ball out top. He tries to go dribble drive. He'll kick it back out. Ball's deflected. He goes out of bounds and go back to the Jays. Talk to our viewers at home, Dave, about pack line defense. Pack line defense, again, you're hard on the ball man to man, but you're really, really between your man and the basket and the basketball defensively elsewhere. You're seeing your man, you're seeing the ball. You're really playing five guys defensively guarding the basketball. And there's a great cut, and Grothaus finds Elwer cutting to the basket and a nifty two, and Elwer's got all four for the Jays. They lead 4 to nothing on the Lee's famous recipe scoreboard. And your help side principles are paramount in that pack line D. There you see Pullman tries to drive in. They're going to get him. Luke Pullman with the charge. And everything right now is going the Jays' way. Couldn't get a better start. Absolutely. Delphi St. John's, two buckets, great defense. Um, they, they, Coach Elwood's got to be real pleased with how this has started for his squad. So 
talk about Cameron Elra a little bit. He leads this team in minutes, assists, rebounds, scoring, deflections, steals. He, he is a really, really good all-around player, Dave. He is a stat stuffer, extraordinaire, <laughs> but between the ears, he is so strong as well. Finds his open teammate right there. And three off the mark. Rebound comes down to Tate Hess. He'll bring it down for the Flyers. There's Jaden Mesher from the left side. Knocks it in. Jaden Mesher with the triple, and he closes the gap to 4-3 on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. He leads the Flyers from behind the arc at 42%. Great to see Mesher out there. And there's a nice dribble drive by Cam Elward. Gets his own rebound. Ball goes out of bounds, and they're going to say it went off a of Blue Jay, and it'll go back to the Flyers. And I bring that up because I uh, had... Marion Local and Fort Recovery earlier in the season. Jaden Mesher did not play in that game due to the nose injury, which he caught with friendly fires. Teammate Jack Kanapke caught him with an elbow in the Van Wert game. So it's great to see him back on the floor. He's been back for a while now, and you're right. He is a sharpshooter. Jack Gerker enters the game for the Jays, as does Ethan Druckenmiller. So two quick subs for the Jays. This is Tate Hess with the ball up top. He's guarded by Grothaus. And they're pulling him out by the volleyball line, so really applying the man-to-man -man pressure here as Tess looks for an open flyer. There's a back cut by Pullman. Gets it into Austin Niekamp, and he scores. The 6'8 sophomore knocks in the deuce, and he makes it 5-4. Flyers take the first lead of the night on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. Excellent offensive ball movement for the Flyers to get the bucket there. And, and Dave, there you see why Cam Elwer leads the conference in foul shot attempts because he's so good at getting to the rim. Yes, and he can go either hand. Left hand, right hand. We've seen him penetrate to the right already uh, this evening. That time he goes to the left. The up fake gets him to the free throw line where he is an 86% free throw shooter tied for first on his team. Second in the Midwest Athletic Conference. It, you know, David, it's unbelievable. A, a young man of that age knows and understands the game so well. Most kids love, fall in love with that three. They fall in love with, you know, just anything outside of the arc. He understands the closer I am to the basket, the better percentage I have. He sure does. And again, talking with Coach Elwer, uh, it's his son, obviously. Sure. Cameron Elwer is Aaron Elwer's son. And He's not being cocky about it or anything, but I asked Coach Elwer, did you see this coming? And he said, Coach, to be quite honest, yes, I did. And I don't mean that no, in, no. in any kind of sense other than what it is. And everybody else has take notice of, taken notice as well as to what Cameron Elwer has done, as you alluded to. District 8 Player of the Year voted on by the coaches. What an honor for oh, a absolutely. freshman. Absolutely. There you saw Mitchell Ranley from the right side. He tries to knock in a three. Ball goes out of bounds. They'll go back into Austin Niekamp. Niekamp tries to go baseline, skip pass across the floor, and it's intercepted by Cam Elwer. He'll bring it down. He's guarded by Tate Hess. Elwer will go to the foul line, tries to take it up. Nice job by Tate Hess of walling up, and they're going to get an over and back call. And we've had several whistles. We're halfway through the first quarter and we don't see Jack Kanapke coming in the game. Uh, again, Coach Guttemuller told me he was questionable. Uh, I'm getting the feeling that we're not going to see him this evening. Well, you watch how he holds his shoulder down there, uh, Dave, and he, he does look like he is in some pain, so we're going to have to wait and see. And I hope that young man gets healthy for the tournament run because he is a huge part of this flyer offense and defense. No doubt, uh, and they can grow out of this, and you, you know, using Austin Niekamp, who has the ball right now in the post. And Austin Niekamp tries to go to the left side, and Cam Elwer comes from behind him and gets a near steal. And in the game now for the Jays is number 10, Colin Feathers, the 5'11 junior, enters the game. And with fans who may be picking up Marion Local for the first time on WSN uh, in this game, you're saying, well, Austin Niekamp's 6'8", he should know how to play on the block. <laughs> well, when you have a 6'9 guy down there, you allow 6'8 to play behind the arc. Absolutely. There's another steal by the Jays. Here they come, down the right side. This is Cam Elwer with the ball. He'll go dribble drive, middle of the floor, takes it up, turns it around, and they'll go back to Elwer. Foul line jumper from Elwer, off the mark. Rebound comes down to the Flyers. They'll go Tate Hess on the right side. Hess guarded by Grothaus. They'll swing it around. This is Jaden Mesher. And we've got a, another foul, and they're going to get Brandon Eink on a char did they? He didn't even have the ball. He ran into the man, and they're going to say that uh, he committed the personal. Yeah, and that's going to be team foul number four for Marion Local here with 237 remaining in our first quarter. Four to, foul, four to one on the fouls, just not lopsided. Sure, just how sure, sure. Yeah. Played out here in early going. This is Grothaus with the ball, guarded up top by Mitchell Randley. 
They'll swing it around. Nolan Schwinnen gets it back to Elwer. They'll go back to Munter up top. Munter guarded by Austin Niekamp. This is Grothaus with the ball. They thought about taking the three. They'll swing it back around to Elwer. Elwer dribble drives, kicks it to the side. They'll go baseline. They'll kick it back out. Elwer dribble drive, foul line, shot goes up. <laughs> the ball swatted away, it comes down to the Flyers. Here comes Tate Hess up the left side. Awesome, awesome play by Austin Niekamp from behind to get a hand on that shot. Three ball from the left side, off the mark, rebound comes down to Ike. Ike takes it back up, off the backboard, and he scores. Brandon Ike with a nice putback, and he gives the Flyers the 7-6 lead on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. And Coach gutter has got to be real pleased with that. You need, you need your guys to step up in the absence of Jack Kanapke. Kanapke averages 13 points per game, leading score tied with Mesher on this squad. Everybody needs to pick up that slack. Nice bucket there by Brandon Ike. There's a three from the left side, off the mark. Rebound comes down to Tate Hess. Hess brings it up the right side. He's guarded up top by number 10, Colin Feathers. That's Tate Hess, a little jumper from the foul line, goes off the mark, rebound comes down. This is Elwer with the ball. He gets a screen from Munter up top. He'll swing it back to Munter. Munter guarded by Austin Niekamp. Jay's attacking the basket at every opportunity they get. Three ball from the top of the key, off the back of the window, and it's good for a triple. Nolan Schwinnen above the arc there, the inside out action, gets his feet set, maybe too set, but when you're right in front of the, the rim, you can use that backboard. Does so effectively there, giving the three pointer. He'll take it. We're down to 30 seconds here in the first quarter. Jay's lead 9 7 on the Lee's recipe scoreboard. They'll swing it back around. This is home Pullman. Back to Hess. Hess looks inside. He's going to hold the ball for the last shot. Tate Hess, the glue guy for this Marion local flyer squad. Second in the MAC with 107 assists. Running the show. Down to five. There's a three ball from the right side. Off the mark going to go out of bounds and that's how the first quarter ends after one quarter from Marion local high school the Delta St. John Blue Jays lead 9-7 we're watching high school basketball WOSN There are no, there's no admission fee to watch this game, but there is a cost for TV44 to broadcast it for you. Say thanks to viewers supporting TV44 by sending them a financial gift right now. TV44 relies on the donations of viewers to enable the airing of this game and all other locally produced programs. Donate now by visiting WTLW.com and click the donate button. Dave, lots of stats flying in. Take yep, it away. Yep. Good patience on offense by both squads. Really good defense. St. John's from the floor, three for eight, 38%. One for three behind the arc, Marion Local. Three for nine from the field, 33%. One for five behind the arc. Rebounds, Marion Local leads six to four. Turnovers, Marion Local four. St. John's two. And the Johnny's two for two from the foul line. There's a three ball from the top of the key. And that ball's deflected as Jack Gerker tries the three and that ball gets deflected. Here come the Flyers. This is Brandon Ike. Tries to go baseline and Grothaus does a great job of chesting up and not allowing him to, to go to the left side. Landon Grothaus leads the St. John's team with 14 charges on the year. Last year he had 40. That's hard to believe. That is hard to believe. Here's knee camp as he turns the foul. Finds Brandon Ike cutting to the basket and a nice reverse layup by Ike. And he ties it up at nine on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. Yeah, knee camp finds the open man. Ike with the bucket, nice assist for Austin Niekamp. Here's Munter from the left side, three ball on the way, and it goes off the mark, and it's going to go out of bounds. We'll go back to the Flyers. So. We talk about those charges with Landon Grothaus, 14 this year. I I'm, wouldn't be surprised if, if Coach Elwer had a discussion with him. I know you can do that, but we need you on the floor. We don't need you to get injured. He's fought shoulder injuries throughout his career, um, gave up his football career in order to try and stay healthy, um, and he's out here now. I, I think that may have happened he's, from last year to this year, but, man, he's a, he's look, a competitor. Elwer and Grothaus, that's a really good guard combination sure for is. any school. <laughs> or a law firm. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Elwer and Grothaus Incorporated. There we go. Here come the Flyers, 6.51 to go. They'll swing it around. They'll go dribble drive middle. 12-foot jumper goes in. 
Luke Pullman knocks in the deuce, and he makes it 11 to 9 on the Lee's recipe scoreboard. Yeah, Luke Pullman, one of the most improved players for the Flyers this year. He is consistent, is he not? He is very consistent. Here's Grothaus with a nice drive on the right side. Rebound comes down to Nekamp. He'll clear the space, and he'll get the ball to Tate Hess. Here come the Flyers up two with 6.24 to go. Tate Hess dribble drive, goes up the left side, and they're going to get Grothaus on the foul. Penetration there puts him to the free throw line. I'm just thinking about Austin Niekamp. He's the one who's had to change his game yes. the most with Jack Kanapke out of the game and uh, unable to play. So I like what Niekamp is doing there on the block. And he's a stretch four, but tonight. I was say he loves to get out on the yeah, perimeter. Yeah. Tonight, he's going to have to live on the block and is accepting that challenge. Uh, fun to watch. Absolutely. So the first one goes in for Tate Hess. Here goes the second one. And he knocks that one in. Tate Hess has got two on the night. And he makes it 13-9 on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. He's the second leading uh, free throw shooter for the Flyers at 75%. Here come the Jays down 13-9. They go to the block, low post. Get the ball down to Austin Munter. And Munter is fouled on the block. He is fouled by Brandon Eink. He got a nice flex screen and a cut across the baseline. The defense trailed, and Brandon Eink picks up the personal. That's his second. second yeah, that's, that's an issue. It is, because the Flyers don't go real deep into their bench. And Munter, the 5'11 junior, Austin Munter, knocks in the first one. Getting ready to come into the game. Back into the game is Luke Holman for the Flyers, and Brandon Eink will take a seat, and there, there you go, that second foul's put him on the bench. So, that, that, in essence, they're, they've got two starters on the bench. They absolutely do, and Austin Munner hitting both of those free throws, he shoots 77% from the line. The Blue Jays lead the MAC in that category, 79%. That's very impressive as a team. Mesher coming off that screen, misses the shot, rebound comes down. It's corralled by the Flyers. They'll bring it back up. This is Tate Hess, a little Euro step, tried to go up. I thought he was going to take it up, but he tries to pass the ball, and he tries to go to number 10, Mitchell Ranley, and the ball goes out of bounds, and they're going to say it goes back to Marion Local. They retain possession, but you're right. Tate Hess probably should have shot that yep, exactly. basketball. Yep. This Too unselfish. Bowman swings it back out to Ranley. Ranley thought he was going to go to Tate Hess. Not a lot of movement right now by Marion Local as they're coming off those screens. There's a nice job by Tate Hess. And there you see the athleticism of the quarterback, Tate Hess, as he knocks it in and he makes it 15-11 on the Lee's recipe scoreboard. And he caught Aaron Munner betwixt in between and was able to score on And him. right back down comes the Jays. Austin Munter knocks in the triple and he makes it 15-14 on the Lee's scoreboard. They're gonna, get a, they're gonna get a foul and they're gonna call that one on number 12, Austin Munter. So Munter hits the three at one end and picks up the personal on the other. Austin Munter, 24% behind the arc. That one looked true. Yes. Nothing but the bottom of the cords. He looked pretty comfortable. Dave, I'm looking around this gym, and there's not a seat in this place. It is a packed house, two really nice student sections, and it's all blue and yellow. It is, yeah. <laughs> there, we've got a foul, and they're going to get. I think it's going to be on Jaden Mesher. I think you're right. I think it is Jaden Mesher picks up the foul, and he lost the ball, and he just tries to corral it again, and he comes across the chest of the, of the Blue Jay, and that is two on Mesher. So foul trouble's starting to pile up for the, for the Flyers. It is, and I think Coach uh, Guttemuller's got to be thinking, do I want to play a little zone to protect my players as far as fouls are concerned? But that's not their DNA, but sometimes you have to adjust on the fly. And there's the matchup we talked about earlier in the pregame day with Tate Hess guarding Cam Elwer. What a great matchup. Tate Hess takes a backseat to no one when it comes to man-to-man -man defense. And as we said, Cam Elwer is Mr. Offense. There's a dribble drive to the foul line. There you see it. Off the mark. Rebound comes down. They'll go to Tate Hess on the left side. Yeah, he was able to work his way open offensively. Got a nice screen, unable to hit the bucket. We have the St. John's contingent to our left. It was a groan right there when that one didn't <laughs> right. go in. They're so used to him making that 15-foot shot right at the top of the free throw line. Swing it back out top. Flyers tried to go down to Kyle Ungren, the 6'3 sophomore. They'll go back to, oh, tried to go into knee camp. 
Yeah, Tate Hess tried to get it in there, jumped, left his feet, and unfortunately, I think he lost the handles on the basketball a little bit. That's not the kind of pass he typically makes. No, you look at a guy like Kyle Unger, the 6'3 sophomore, who's a big body. He's going to have to play a really big role tonight, Dave. He is, and, and he's up to that challenge, but you're right. But he's got to step in, accept that role tonight, and execute it. Roadhouse dribble drive right side. Oh, nice nifty move, and he misses the shot right under the basket. Had a nice up and under, misses the shot. Rebound comes down, and the Flyers will take over. Hess on the right side. He'll swing it back to Ranley. They'll go Austin Niekamp. They've got Ungren inside. So that puts Niekamp back in his natural position yes. yep. out around the arc and then working across the baseline. Ungren with the basketball there. There's a dribble drive on the right side. Holman tried to go up. The ball's blocked. They'll go back to Niekamp. Niekamp gets him on his shoulder. And a nice job by Austin Niekamp of walling off the defender and going to the right side. Yeah, keeps his body between the ball and the bat and the defender. That's a nice job there. Roadhouse from the right side, triple. Ball goes off the mark. Rebound's going to come down. And they're going to say Muncher fouled Ungren on the rebound. So they're going to say... No, that's Ethan Druckmiller. I'm, excuse me, wrong guy. They got Druckmiller on the foul. A lot of contact both ways right there. This one per, uh, particular call, this particular call goes the Flyers' way. They'll bring Jaden Mesher back in the game, and now they, Ungren is the tallest player on the floor at 6'3", so going a little guard heavy right now on both squads. This is Pullman up top, swings it to Ranley. Ranley looks down, tried to find Ungren coming across. They'll go back to Tate Hess. Back to Pullman, Pullman to Ungren. Two forty to go. Flyers up 17-14. Pullman with the dribble drive, little jumper off the mark. Pullman almost got his own rebound. Comes down to the Flyers. Here, or excuse me, to the Jays. Here comes Cam Elwer. Gets a screen up top. He's going to three ball from the right side, off the mark. Rebound comes down to Ungren. He gets it to Tate Hess. So Ungren's come in the game, hasn't had a yeah. whole lot of playing time, but he's doing a nice job affecting the game in a positive way for the Flyers. Ungren with the ball, the ball goes off the mark. And they're gonna say a foul up top, or out top on the left side, and they get number four, Jack Gerker with the foul. That is his first. And there you see Austin Niekamp will check back in for Ungren, and Ungren, really, really good minutes. Yeah, getting a nice applause from the Flyer crowd does exactly what his team and his coach wants him to do in there. So Pullman will trigger in front of the home crowd. we will go back to Ranley. Tate Hess on the right side gets a screen from Ranley. No dribble drive, foul line. Little spin move up and under, takes it in. And off the mark, it was down and, and scored and it comes back out. Here come the Jays. Here comes Elwer with the left hand. He's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Hess. Hess on the right side, gets it over to Pullman. Pullman dribble drive on the baseline. He'll kick it back to Austin Niekamp, 1.39 to go. Flyers lead 17-14. There's the nice drive by Ranley. He'll take it in, score and foul. Mitchell Ranley with the drive. And a nice job again to the bucket. He'll go to the foul line and try to make it the old fashioned three. Along with Luke Pullman, Mitchell Ranley one of the most improved players on this Flyer squad beginning of the year. He was playing some JV yes. basketball, and he has stepped up as the year has gone yes. on, given the Flyers depth, and gets an opportunity here for a three-point play the old-fashioned way. Right. Here's Mitchell Ranley at the line. Flyers lead 19-14. And he knocks that one in. Mitchell Ranley gives the Flyers the 2014 lead. Ranley's got three on the night. Here comes Grothaus with the ball. Jays down 20-14. Danny Hobart, Dave Bowen from Marion Local High School. MAC championship on the line. And we've been treated to a great game. There's a nice dribble drive by Elwer. Gets his man in the air, and he goes up and scores. And there you see Cam Elwer's ability to get to the rack. Yeah, great strength. Executes the play to get to the rim. Big possession for the Blue Jays right yes, there. Absolutely. They don't score. That's a great call. And uh, Marion Local scores. Chance to go up 10. There you see Ungren had his man sealed off. Just misses the shot. Tries a little sky hook there. Thought he would have been better served to go straight up with it. Here come the Jays. Elwer kicks it back out. 
There's a dribble drive to the foul line. They'll go back out. Elward goes to the foul line. They'll kick it back out. Three ball from the top of the key. Off the mark. Rebound comes down to Ungren. He'll go to Pullman on the side. They'll get it back to Tate Hess, and he'll slow it down with 34 seconds to go. Great look by Nolan Schwinnen right there, but great offensive movement by the Blue Jays on that particular possession. Unable to come with the bucket, but had an outstanding look for Schwinnen. Here's Hess. He's eating a little shake and bake there, and he goes up, and they're going to say a charge. They got Tate Hess on the charge as Nolan Schwinnen held his position there, and Steve Trout says, not so fast. We got a charge. Great penetration by Hess, but Nolan Schwinn, and again, he had rotated over. The, the play that Tate Hess makes to get to the rim was really smooth. It was. It's just that there was an extra defender That's who right. had rotated over. That was that pack line defense, the help side. Nolan Schwinn in position. And so there's some confusion as the officials have come over to the scorer's table. Not real sure what's going on now. I think they want to make sure they have the right number. Okay. And they do number 12, Tate Hess. That's his second. So how important is this now, Dave? The, the Jays got the ball back with 22 seconds to go, down four, and a chance to get the last shot of the half. Yeah, we had an opportunity where the score could have been 23-14. Right, right. Now it's 2016 off the Elwood bucket, and they have a chance to cut it to one going into the half. Here's Grothaus with the ball up top. We're down to seven. He gets it to Elwood. Elwood up top. We're down to four. Here goes Elwood. Jumper from the foul line. They're going to say he traveled. He took the extra step. And I saw that one coming, Dave. Just one too many steps. Yeah, the officials saw it, as did three quarters of the gym. <laughs> Marion Vocal, Marion Vocal Flyer. Marion Vocal, is that what you say? Yeah. <laughs> Marion Vocal, yep. Yeah. That's right. They were letting the official know they well, saw the. Uh, these are some of the best fans shuffle. in all of Ohio down here. These, mm -hmm. They are passionate about their team. So 1.3 seconds to go. Let's see if Marion Vocal can get a shot off. Tate Hess, the quarterback, will trigger it in. He throws it all the way down the floor. Gets it in, oh, almost to Jaden Mesher. And they're going to say that Mesher was fouled. He's fouled by Austin Munter, Dave. That's going to put him at the line for two. It sure is. What a great play by the Flyers. I thought the ball was going to hit the right, rafters. Because right. it was between two of them. And Mesher catches it, tries to shoot it in the same movement. We've got the red lights on the backboard. Oh my goodness, you're right. If you're at the visiting school, you'd be upset about that. <laughs> but you're at home, okay, we'll just have him on and let him shoot him anyway. And he gets one out of two. So that'll do it for the first half from Marion Local as the Flyers take a 21-16 lead. When we come back, we'll have second half action from Marion Local High School. Welcome back to Marion Local High School, where after one half of basketball, the Marion Local Flyers lead the Devil St. John Blue Jays 21-16. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Dave Bowen. And Dave, it looks like in the first half, the Blue Jays came out on fire. Marion Local kind of clamped down on them defensively. And for Marion Local, they're getting contributions from seven different players. It's balanced for Marion Local. You're correct, Danny. And it was turned into a 14-7 second quarter in favor of the Flyers to give them this 21-16 halftime lead. You look at the halftime discussions a little bit. I think if you're St. John's, Coach Elwer's going to tell his group, hey, great floor game. Well, we only have three turnovers. we got to shoot it better. We're shooting 29% from the floor in the first half, five for 17. Uh, we've got to look to attack the rim a little bit more. And then if we draw the bigs, jump stop, kick it out for the wide open look. Landon Grothaus has not scored in this game. That's a yeah, key that's for a huge, St. John's. Huge. He needs to get on the on the scoring column for them to be successful. Uh, Marion Local has 13 rebounds, only three of which are offensive, but they have made St. John's pay with those offensive rebounds in the first half. Dave, we're not, we haven't seen Jack Kanapke for Marion Local. I don't know if we're going to see him in the second half. I would say not. What is Marion Local doing to fill the void of Jack Kanapke not being on the floor? Well, Austin Niekamp is doing a great job job of getting position on the block against Austin Munter. I've seen Munter work very effectively He's physical. Down He's physical, there. yes. Yeah. But Austin Niekamp is doing a 
nice job. And I know that Coach Guttemuller has talked to his squad. When Austin gets the ball down, down there on the block, don't stand and watch. Cut. Make a move because Austin will get you the ball if you uh, flash open for him. So let's keep doing that offensively. That balance scoring, as you said, has been a key for Marion Local to make up for the absence of Jack Kanapke. And then finally, Mary Loco, Coach Gattamoller with his squad, keep contesting that three-point shot and limit the penetration that the Blue Jays like to have offensively so we can take away some of their strengths. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe, Chicken in Lima, Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Dave, great analysis. That's why you're the best in the game, brother. Whoa. <laughs> I tell that to all my partners. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. Great. Great to be a part of it. <laughs> here comes Marion Local. This is Austin. He can't three ball from the right side right off the shoot. Nikant throws up the three, comes off the rim. He cuts back in. He scores from the left side. Austin Nikant recognizes what the defense gives him. And goes to the rim, and he gets the deuce and makes it 23-16 on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. St. John's only gave up three offensive rebounds. They give up one right there on the first possession of the third quarter. Mary Moko makes them pay. So here come the Jays down 23-16, 7-29 to go. Danny Holbrook, Dave Bowen from Marion Local High School, the Midwest Athletic Conference Championship on the line. Marion Local already holds a share of it, but Delta St. John's wants their piece of the pie. There's a dribble drive to the left side. They'll try to bring it back out. This is Austin Munter. He kicks it over to Nolan Schwinnen. Schwinnen back to Munter. Munter looking for Elward down on the block. Elward gets the ball, guarded by two. Sees a cut it down the left side, and that was Schwinnen. He tries to go up to the left side, misses a shot. The ball goes back to Marion Local. That's where height just comes into play they naturally. Austin Niekamp altered that shot. The move by Nolan Schwinnen had an open lane, but the 6'8 sophomore, Austin Niekamp, affects the shot. It doesn't go down. Ball goes out of bounds. Flyer basketball. And this is Brandon Eink with the ball up top. He'll go across to Mesher. Mesher to Pullman. Pullman gets it into Tate Hess. Tate Hess on the block. He goes up and under, tries to take the ball up. He's guarded by Grothaus. Grothaus over on Pullman. Pullman with a nice little 12-footer, and he knocks it in, and the Flyers' lead has grown to nine at 25-16. Yeah, Luke Pullman has scored throughout the year. He's had four or five double-figure games, but he's having a great game tonight. Here come the Flyers. This is Austin Niekamp. Gets it over to Mesher, and they're going to say Niekamp with the charge. And there's the Grothaus. You called it earlier, Dave. Landon Grothaus, he's a great guy, a glue guy for this squad. The Delphi St. John's Blue Jays, Austin Niekamp, comes down the floor. Needed the jump stop right there. Yeah, but again, there you see the versatility of Austin Niekamp. You've talked about it all night. He, he brings the break down. My goodness, the 6'8 sophomore wasn't afraid to go take it to the rim. Yeah, he is a very tough, tough matchup for any squad, but especially tonight for St. John's. But right there, Landon Grothaus draws the charge on him. Niekamp picks up his first personal foul. Grothaus is up top. He's guarded by Jaden Mesher. Go inside to Munter. Munter swings it back out. Back to Nolan Schwinner. Munter thought about taking the three. He dribble drives to the middle. He'll kick it back out. They'll swing it to Cam Elwer. Cam Elwer guarded by Ike. And they're going to say Cam Elwer traveled with the basketball. Second turnover tonight on Mr. Elwer. Entering the game now for Marion Local is Mitchell Randley. We saw a lot of him in the first half, played an exceptionally well game. And, and Cameron's not trying to do anything no. out of character, just good defense by Marion Local forces him into the, the travel. And ever since the end of the first quarter, as I said earlier, Marion Local's really dialed up the D, and they are really playing well on that end of the floor. This is Austin Niekamp, thought about taking the shot. He'll swing it back to Hess. Hess goes to Pullman, Pullman from the foul line, and he knocks it in. Luke Pullman with the silky sweet jumper, and Coach Elwer's going to take a timeout with 5.30 to go. The Flyers lead the Blue Jays 27-16. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Marion Local High School, where with 5.30 to go in the third quarter, the Marion Local Flyers have jumped up by nine on the Blue Jays, excuse me, 11 on the Blue Jays. Dave, how are they doing it at the start of the third quarter? Patience on offense, the offensive rebound on the first possession. They get a bucket right there. Great timeout by Coach Elwer. 
we got to get back into this, but we got to do it with our defense. Yeah, we've got to score, obviously, sure. but defensively, we've given up some good looks there for Marion Local. They've taken advantage of it. 27 16. Yeah, getting in the danger zone yeah, was, a little yeah, bit. I was going to ask St. you that. Yep. Little Kenny Hoggins action. <laughs> danger zone. They need a, a really good possession here, and the ball. Obviously, we'll need to go through number 11 on this possession. I'll be very surprised if it doesn't. So this is Nolan Schwinnen up top. He'll swing it over. Oh, the ball goes out of bounds. They tried to push the ball down to Aaron Munter. Aaron Munter is going to have to get some inside presence against Neekamp to get those shooters some room on the outside. Cam Elward triggers the ball underneath St. John's basket. He'll go back to Munter. Munter is guarded by Austin Neekamp. Tries to turn around on him. Ball gets deflected. Jaden Mesher with the steal. He'll take it up, and he scores. Jaden Mesher, the senior sharpshooter with the nice dribble drive to the bucket, and he gives the Flyers the 29-16 lead. Gets the steal, goes coast to coast, and lays it in. Good defense by Neekamp on Munner to force that turnover. He could not get a look. Kicked it out. Mesher with the deflection. This is Munter up top. Swings the ball back around. Munter to Munter. They'll go to Schwinnen. Back to Munter. Three ball from the right side. And it's good. And a nice three ball by Aaron Munter. Yeah, Aaron Munter. He can shoot it from out there. He is the most improved player on this squad. One of them. Nice return play by Tate Hess. Good call, Dave. Tate Hess going up against Grothaus. And he builds the lead back to 31-19 on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. This is, excuse me, this is Cam Elwer with the ball. Back out to Munter. Munter down low, guarded by Neekamp. Tries to go up the left side. They'll swing it back. Three ball from the right side. Off the mark. Rebound goes off of Munter, and it'll go back to Marion Local. So coming out of that timeout, Coach Elwer has really made it an emphasis to get the ball to Aaron Munter on the block or in the short, uh, you know, 10 to 15 foot range. He's got a three out of it. It has helped with their offensive movement but Aaron Munner's going to come out of the game now. And I think it's a great call, Dave, what you just said. They're going to take Neekamp out, but they're going to bring Ungram back in the game to combat Munter down on the low post. Those are two really big kids. <laughs> they are. <laughs> They'll be battling tonight. Here's Tate Hess up top. He gets a screen from Ungren. Backdoor cut by Mesher, and Mesher misses the shot. Rebound comes down to the Jays. Here comes Elwer. He'll lead the break. Guarded up top by Mitchell Ranley. Little dribble drive to the foul line, takes it up the right side in a nice move. He's going to go to the line and shoot two. He just makes it so challenging for you. He does. If you want to go double him, he's going to find the open man. If he, if you don't, he's going to make you pay as he does right there. Again, great strength for a freshman. Gets to the rack, draws the foul, going to the free throw line to shoot two. So they'll shoot the first one and knock it in. And, and right now they need that clock stop. They need to get to the foul line. So a really nice job by Cam Elwer of recognizing the moment. And I say that a lot of kids need to understand the moment they're in, the, the execution of the offensive set that they're in. Execution, that's the key word. You just can't say, okay, I got to take over right. and force right. things. You got to let it come within the context of the offense and his teammates assists with him in that regard. So he misses one out of two. Flyers come back. Austin Neekamp with a nice, strong move at the right side. Ball comes down to Elwer. Elwer will lead the break. He's guarded by Mitchell Ranley out top. Tate Hess takes him from there. Just Tate Hess has been all over Cam Elwer. We see it right here on that drive. Keeps him from getting to the basket. And that unbelievable defense by Tate Hess. We've been talking about it all night, but it is so true. This is Gerker with the ball. He'll dribble drive to the middle. He'll swing it back out to Grothaus. Grothaus tries to go middle. Nice right-handed move and a nice job. Landon Grothaus needed that in the worst way. And he gets on the books and he's got two for the night and it's 31-22. Excellent penetration and again against the taller Flyers so does a good job of putting his body between the ball and the basket and the defender and scores. 2.44 to go. Flyers lead 31-22. Danny Hilbert, Dave Bowen from Marion Local High School. The MAC title on the line. Flyers playing without Jack Kanapkin tonight. Nice scoop shot by, or excuse me, by Austin Neekamp. Great position down low, and he scores. And what I love about that possession is uh, Neekamp had the ball, went out to Hess, and Hess came right back to him. When Neekamp gave the ball up, he didn't relax. He reposted 
did his homework early and got it ball, got it back and scored. And there the Jays did a nice job of getting the ball into Ethan Druckenmiller, and Druckenmiller is fouled by Austin Niekamp. Niekamp thought he went straight up. They're going to call that most of the time when the bodies hit like that. Yep, Steve Trout with the call, going to put Druck Miller to the free throw line where he is a 58% free throw shooter. Misses the first one entering the game for the Jays. Number five, Nolan Schwinnin back in the game. As you said, you got to make him with the clock stop. Marion Locals just put on a little run here, that 6-0 run at the beginning of the third quarter. And it's going to be tough for the Blue Jays to overcome that. They're going to have to work hard. Doesn't come up with any points there that time. And misses both shots. There's a steal there. Cam Elwer, and he collides with Austin Meekamp, and they're going to say Cam Elwer charged. Meekamp got in good position, and they're going to call him for a charge. Austin Meekamp totally pumped up for taking that charge. I love that excitement. When you take a charge defensively, you get the turnover. <laughs> it's a momentum swing. St. John's had just stolen the basketball, and Austin Niekamp in the right place at the right time draws a charge in the open floor. 6'8 guy doing that. And there's a timeout. They had a little trouble getting the ball in. Marion Logan's going to take a timeout. That'll give us a chance to take a timeout. When we come back, more action from Marion Logan High School. Welcome back to Marion Local High School. We're with 2.08 to go. The Marion Local Flyers lead 33-22. And Dave, I know we, we joked a little bit earlier about the danger zone. And right now, it's, a, it's an 11-point lead. Marion Local puts more points on the board here. You, you really got to be concerned if you're double St. John's. You absolutely do. And this is a big possession defensively. You don't want to get down any more to this Flyer squad. They are just so fundamentally sound. And then you add that they're... They're pretty much taller than St. John's at every position, a little longer, and that just makes it tough when you have to really start looking to score quickly against that vaunted flyer defense. So this is Tate Hess, dribble drive baseline. Roadhouse cuts him off, but he turns around and just a nice job of Tate Hess of recognizing where the defender is. He scores, and it's 35-22 on the lead scoreboard. No opportunity for St. John's to help out, to put two guys on Hess on the block. It was a one-on-one -on -one situation. He took advantage of it. There's a three from the left side, off the mark. Aaron Munter was off the mark there. Here come the Flyers. This is Mesher, goes up from the left side and scores. 37-22 on the lead scoreboard, and it's a 15-point lead for the Flyers. When you can get a transition bucket in this game with these two programs, that can be deadly, and that does push them up by 15. That's, that's a real, real big bucket for Marion Local right now. Nice job by Elwer. Went to the middle. I thought he should have took that shot, and he kicks it back out. I'll go back to Elward, dribble drive to the foul. A little, little turnaround there, and he knocks it in. Cam Elward gets the deuce, and he makes it 37 24. Elward's got 11 on the night to lead the Jays. Here come the Flyers, 54 seconds to go. This is Brandon Eink up top. He'll swing it to Ranley. Ranley looks for Austin Niekamp. Austin Niekamp guarded by Munter on the perimeter. They'll go back to Hess. You're not looking to hold the ball for the rest of the quarter. You want a 90% shot, though. You want a real good quality look. And if you don't get it, then, yeah, run it down and get what you get. Mesher with the dribble drive. Ball comes back to Munter. Munter brings it down. They'll go to Cam Elwer. And you see the Flyers are spreading the floor out. And they're getting a lot of back cuts, and they're getting to the rim. So really an effective offense right now. Yes, taking away that, that help side, that pack line defensive mentality that the Blue Jays like to, to run so effectively. Here's Elwer with the ball. He's guarded by Ranley up top. They'll swing it down to the corner. Schwinnin up top. Go back to Elwer. Three seconds. Elwer dribble drive. Goes, gets his man up, takes it in, and scores. Cam Elwer gives the Blue Jays some relief. And after three quarters of play, the Marion Local Flyers lead 37 to 26. We come back, fourth quarter action right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Marion Local High School. Start of the fourth quarter, the Flyers lead 37-26. Talk a little bit about that summary of the third quarter, Dave. Yeah, Marion Local, they shot the ball extremely well. Eight for 12 from the floor. 
Eight for 11 from two. They attacked the rim. They got the ball around the basket. That's where they scored it. 0 for 1 behind the arc. St. John's, not bad. Four for eight. You'll take 50%, sure, but only eight shots compared to 12. They shot as many as Marion Local made. That's what cost them in that quarter. St. John's one for four from the foul line as well. Only two turnovers in the, in the quarter for each squad. I think what we also need to be watching, Danny, is offensively when Cameron Elwer is looking to penetrate, Austin Niekamp is simply leaving his man to, to help, help out, out yes, yep. and guard that penetration, get his hands up. So here come the Blue Jays down 37-26. This is Schwinnen up top, guarded by Brandon Ike. There's Grothaus from the left side, off the mark. Rebound comes down to Brandon Ike, and they're going to say Nolan Schwinnen went over his back. Yeah, great look for Landon Grothaus off the flare screen set by Elward. Just doesn't go down for him, but a real good look. And again, I saw Landon Grothaus against Crestview two weeks ago, and he hurt his shoulder at the end of the game. He's not 100%, sure, sure. obviously, but it was a good look. Just didn't go down for him right yeah, and there. And those are the things, Dave, when you're down 11 and you get a good look like that, and for all intents and purposes, that was in and out, and that's really frustrating for the Jays. No doubt. Now here comes Marion Local, and they're going to really, really be patient and find that quality look on offense with the 11-point lead. So Tate has swings it over to Mesher. Mesher looks for Brandon Ike. Ike guarded by Elwer out top. They'll go back to Hess. 7-14 to go. Local leads 37-26. This is Hess. Thought about going to the foul line. They'll go back to Pullman. Shot goes up, and Austin Niekamp knocks in the deuce, and he's fouled, knocked down. He'll go to the line for an old-fashioned three. Yeah, Marion Local gets the cutter to the basket, doesn't go down, but Niekamp with the offensive rebound, the hoop and the harm, doing a great job of playing that position, usually occupied by one Jack Kanapke. Austin Niekamp has 10 on the night, and he has been fantastic on both ends of the floor and he misses that shot. Rebound comes down to Elwer. Elwer goes down the middle of the floor. He's going to take it to the rim. A little spin move, takes it up against Niekamp, and Niekamp commits the foul, and Elwer goes to the line to shoot two. Just does such a great job of drawing contact and putting the official in a position where he can do nothing but call the foul. Absolutely. Niekamp tried to stay straight up on Elwer, but came down just a little bit and was moving. <laughs> and that's the thing is, is Niekamp was in good position. <laughs> He mm -hmm. really was. He commits the foul, he knocks in the first one, makes it 39-27. Elwer's got 14. He's got 15 on the night as he knocks in both of them. He's got 15 to lead all scorers. He averages 22 a game, so the locals done a great job of keeping him in check tonight. They and really have, and you got to give a lot of that credit to Tate Hess and then Austin Niekamp rotating when penetration does occur to help out on Elwer's penetration. This is Hess, he'll kick it back out to Brandon Ike. Marion Local leads 39-28, 6.40 to go. Hess guarded by Grothaus up top, and they're gonna say Hess with the charge. And that's the second time Landon Grothaus has taken a charge. Nice job defensively again by Landon Grothaus. He set Tate Hess up a little bit. <laughs> Those two guys, both seniors, they've played each other for several <laughs> yeah, years. Right. They know each other inside and out. You're absolutely right. We talk about winning battles and winning wars. We still don't know the outcome of this one, but on that particular possession, Landon Grothaus wins the battle. 6.37 to go. Danny Holbrook, Dave Bowen from Marion Local, a packed Marion Local High School gym. Mac title on the line. Jay's trying to get their piece of it, down 39-28. Elwer up top, and he's guarded by Brandon Ike. They'll swing it over to Nolan Schwinnen. He's guarded by Tate Hess. Down low on the right side, Austin Meekamp on the ball. They'll swing it back to Elwer. Little dribble drive baseline. Back into the middle, Muncher goes up, and they're going to say Austin Meekamp fouled him on the floor. Yeah, nice play by Austin Munner. First of all, reeling that in off the baseline penetration. His teammate passed it to him and caught it. And then Niekamp was out of position there, which hasn't happened very right, often right. for either squad tonight defensively. Both teams very, very strong. Dave, but that's, that's yeah, four yeah. fouls. I know, excuse me, I didn't mean to walk on no. you. You're both thinking the same thing. Mm -hmm. That's four fouls on Austin Niekamp. 
So the Jays down 11 with 6.10 to go. Remember that? Austin Niekamp went out at the 6.09 mark. And there's another foul on the floor. Yeah, we're going to see how that plays out. Kyle Ungroom going to come in. He's got big shoes to fill, but I'm sure he's up to the task as far as giving great effort. But St. John's penetrates right there. They're going to see the opportunity with the 6-8 knee camp out of the game. Not so much defense around the glass. Absolutely. Schwinnin misses the first free throw. Here comes Marion Local. There's Tate Hess with the drive. They're going to say the foul was on the floor. Foul will go against number 12 for the Jays, Austin Munter. That's his third. Tate has to trigger out underneath the basket. He'll go back to Ungren. Ungren goes to Eink. Eink guarded out top by Nolan Schwinnen. There's a dribble drive on the left side. They'll kick it back out. Flyers lead 39-28, 5.45 to go here in the fourth quarter. Jaden Mesher gets the ball up top. He's guarded by Grothaus. Got a combination going on here. Mary Local has made the decision in the fourth quarter to run the offense high, get it away from the basket, spread St. John's out, look for penetration lanes. But St. John's has upped their defensive pressure as well, limiting that penetration. Looks like we may get some more fouls here. It's going to be a, a game that it's going to be dictated by the foul. Absolutely. The free throw see line. Austin Munter picks up his fourth foul. So. Austin Munter, a starter for the Jays. He's down on the bench with four fouls with 5.28 to go. So as I said earlier, Austin Meekamp goes out of the game with 6.09 to go and still nothing off the lead here for the Jays. You don't want to quit looking at the basket if you're Marion Local. That could create a switch in momentum and the Blue Jays could ride it to get themselves back in the game. But there's great penetration, Danny. Nice job by Brandon Ein as he goes up and under with the left hand, scores the bucket, and he'll go to the free throw line. Picks up his fifth and sixth point of the game. Does one Brandon Eink. Makes it 41-28 with 5-10 to go. Eink will go to the free throw line. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. So Ike goes to the line, 5-10 to go. Flyers lead 41-28. He misses that one off the rim. Goes outside, or go, excuse me, goes outside of the arc, and it's picked up by Tate Hess, and everything going Marion Local's way right now. Yeah, that's the third offensive rebound this half for Marion Local, and they've all been big. They've scored off the other two, and the Flyers are going to take a timeout. And we're going to take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Do you enjoy games like this one? Are you thankful for the chance to showcase our local high school teams on TV? Please consider making a donation to TV44 so we can keep airing games just like this one. Donate online right now at WTLW.com or send a gift by phone by calling 419-339-4444. And thank you very much. So 4.59 to go, Dave. Flyers lead 41-28. Not a lot coming off that lead right now. No, they, they've maintained that. I guess I just want to say we've got a great view up here by our main camera. We can look into both timeouts. Coach Gutemuller and Coach Elwer just doing what they do, just coaching uh, as effectively as they can right now, giving everything they can to their players to put them in a position uh, to come away with a win in this game. Just a real pleasure to watch. Yeah, both really good coaches. We get a chance to see week in and week out, and these two guys do it really well. So here come the Flyers. This is Tate Hess guarded by Landon Grothaus. Hess goes up the left side. He's fouled. He knocks it in, and he'll go to the line for an old-fashioned three, and the Flyers are just extending that lead. Yeah, the old-fashioned three going to the antique store, if you will, gets the bucket <laughs> and one free throw. But Marion Loco spread that off out, making that pack line defense so tough to execute for the Blue Jays and then getting to the rim and Tess with the hoop and the harm. And there he ups the lead to 44-28 with 4.48 to go. This is Elwer out top. Ball stolen away by Hess. Goes out of bounds. It'll go back to the Jays. So a great, great job by Coach Gutemuller 
with the loss of Jack Kanapke and just making all the right moves for three and a half quarters, and we'll see how this one ends up, but just a great job on his staff. Extremely impressive, his staff, the players accepting the challenge. And not that Delphi St. John's has played bad tonight. Not at all. They've just, they ran against a buzzsaw here in Marion Local. And you take a look at Marion Local, uh, they've won eight of their last 10 games. Uh, the last win, they got over an 18 and two Rushi squad, Dave, <laughs> without mm -hmm. Kanapke. I mean, mm -hmm. and down at Rushi also. Yeah, and I'm just watching uh, Coach Guttemuller right there. Tate Hess with the personal picks up his fourth, and I think he was like, okay, Tate, I appreciate your aggressive <laughs> defense, but we do not need to foul we the guy that here. is the 86% free throw shooter tied uh, on his team for the lead in that category and second in our conference overall. Now we're Knox in the first one. He's got 16 on the night. He leads all scores in the game, 44-29, 4.28 to go. Second one on the way, and he knocks that one in. He's got 17 on the night. Entering the game now for the Jays, number 23, Drew Boggs making his first appearance. They'll sit down number five, Nolan Schwinnen. Full court pressure by the Blue Jays. Ike gets it into Pullman. They'll go back to Ike. He's guarded by Boggs out top. They'll swing it back to Pullman. Pullman thought about pulling the trigger, and he throws the ball away, and they'll go back to the Jays. So good aggressive defense by Delphus gives them the basketball here. Down 14 with 4.18 to go. Not insurmountable, but you got to get scores and stops. And really when you're putting that pressure on, Dave, you're looking to speed up the opposition. You're not necessarily looking for steals. You're looking for things that just happen right there. Exactly. That turnover was a result of St. John's defense, full court style. Sped the Flyers up and they turn it over. There's a near steal by the Flyers. The ball goes out of bounds. They're going to say it went off of number four, Jack Gerker, and that's exactly what it did. I saw the – we had a great angle of it. It went off his leg and it'll go back to the Flyers. So one turnover and then another, one for each team. So everybody holds serve. 4-11 to go. Flyers lead 44-30. This is Eink with the ball. He'll get it back to Tate Hess. Tate Hess is guarded by Aaron Munter. Hess tries to go to the foul line. Takes it back up the left side. There's going to be a foul on Aaron Munter. You saw that coming from up there. Yeah. Munter's having a hard time staying with Tate Hess, and that's understandably so. Tate Hess, really athletic. Yeah, aggressive to the basket. Knows he's going to get the shot off or draw the foul. 75% free throw for the fly, free throw shooter for the Flyers. You know, we mentioned Cam Elwer being District 8 Player of the Year. Uh, Tay Hess, second team District 8. Jaden Mesher, second team District 8. Jack Kanapke, first team District 8 for the Flyers. Well, you look at Marion Local, Dave, and, and, and you know, a lot of the focus, and rightfully so, is on Kanapke and Kneekamp, 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, but when these guards are playing like this, it just makes them so much better, so much better. Yeah, year in, year out, Marion Local brings the size. Yeah, right, yeah, right, they right. bring the size. It's what's their guard play going to be like that particular year? And you nailed it. Hess and Mesher, they've done a great job. <laughs> Uh, then you've got Randy and, and Pullman and yeah. Hank. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 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 a deep tournament run for the for the Flyers. Nice dribble drive there by Brandon mm -hmm. Ike. And that's a second time he's went to the left side, taking it up, and it's 46-32 on the Lee's recipe scoreboard. Munter thought about shooting it. He'll kick it back out. Go back to Schwinnen. 3-12 to go. Back to Elwer. Elwer up top. Schwinnen dribble drive on the right side, takes it off, and it's blocked by Austin Nekant. And, excuse me, that was blocked by Luke Pullman, Luke I Pullman, believe. Luke Pullman, I yes. believe. You're right. It Absolutely. looked like Austin Nekant. <laughs> he was up there. <laughs> he was up so high. <laughs> and, you know, we mentioned District 8 selections for the Flyers besides Cameron Elwer, Landon Grothaus, a second-team District 8 selection, and then Brian Clark, assistant coach for Coach Elwer. Assistant Coach of the Year in That's District fantastic. 8. fantastic. There you saw Elwer step through, and we're going to take another timeout with 2.55 to go. When we come back, we'll have the conclusion from Marion Local High School. Welcome back to Marion Local High School with 2.55 to go. The Marion Local Flyers lead the Delta St. John's Blue Jays. 
46-34. And Dave, I'm watching down in the huddle of the Marion Local faithful here, and Coach Guttemaller is just coaching them up like they're down 15. I love his passion for this game. Yeah, we can see the whiteboard. I think he's going over the press offense. Now, again, the press offense that Marion Local runs, it's the same press offense they've run since sure. Jack yeah. Albers. Yep. And again, consist consistency only helps a program. Sure. And if you're, and, and one of the things you'll see, and I don't know if we'll see it here with the man to man, it's not zone pressure, but a lot of times they don't dribble the ball that much when they're facing full court pressure. Let's see what we get here. Looking long. There's Hess and he finds Pullman, gets loose, and the ball gets stolen away. Here come the Jays down 46 34, 250 to go. This is Elwer. Three ball from the top of the key, off the mark. Rebound comes down, and they're going to get a foul. And let's see who that one's on. That's going to go against. Let's see who they call that one on. Fouls on number 10 for Delvis. Colin Feathers with the foul. They both went into the bench there. That's why we had a little trouble seeing who the foul was committed on. Brandon Eich will enter back in for the Flyers and coming back in for Delphi St. John's is number 33, Aaron Munter, the 6'2 junior. And Luke Pullman's going to go to the free throw line. Oh, he is, is the leading free throw shooter for Marion Loco at 77%. Let's see what he does here. First one on the way. He knocks that one in. Luke Pullman. Makes it 47-34. Pullman's got seven on the night. Our JV game was won by Marion Local, 38-34. Jacob Sherrick, the leader of the Flyers at that level. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Jacob Sherrick, head, or JV coach, you're absolutely right. Here come the Jays down 48-34, 2.40 to go. Landon Grothaus swings it around. Three ball from the left side, and it's good. Colin Feathers from the left side of the floor knocks in the three ball with 2.33 to go. We'll be back after these messages. Welcome back to Marion Local High School with 2.33 to go in this one. The Flyers lead 48-37. So a huge three ball right there, Dave, to close the gap to 11. Yeah, any, you'll take it any way that you can as, as long as you can do it quickly. And right there, the Blue Jays do exactly that. I don't think we'll see Marion Local go for the home run on this uh, possession of press offense. Didn't get it the last time. It resulted in a turnover. I think Coach uh, Guttemuller want him to be fundamentally sound here. And he brings Austin Niekamp back in the game. And there's a steal. The steal goes back to the Jays. And Grothaus tries to go to the middle. And he's going to be fouled with 2.29 to go. So the Jays trying to cut into this thing down 11. Great, great press uh, defense by the Blue Jays to get the steal. Kneecamp came up the floor and then he hesitated just a second and that's when the pass was made and you always teach your players to keep coming to the basketball and when that hesitation occurred the Blue Jays defense was able to step in front and get the steal and now we've got uh, Landon Grothaus who's cleaning the, Clean floor, the floor, cleaning his shoes. <laughs> I need to take him home and have him clean my house. He's, He's going to go to the free throw there. line. Grothaus with the ball. He'll take the first one. And misses that one. Rebound comes down to Randley. Randall bring it out to Mesher. Mesher swings it over to Hess with 2.24 to go. Flyers up 48-37. Swinging up top. This is Mesher. Over to Randley. Randley skipped past the Pullman. Hess guarded by Grothaus. And there's a foul on the floor. Foul is on Landon Grothaus. That's his third. That's going to send Tate Hess to the free throw line, the 6'2 senior. Again, the glue guy for this Marion local squad. Coach uh, Guttemuller loves what Tate brings to the floor for his team in so many ways. He does average nine points per game. We mentioned earlier in the broadcast he has 
107 assists coming into this game, leads his squad second in the MAC. Just does a lot of those little things that you want to have happen from your point guard. Well, you saw him all fall, Dave. He led the quarter, led the football team to the state title. A quarterback made great play after play, and here he is doing it on the hardwood. Flyers lead 49-37, 2:05 to go. This is Elwer out top, dribble drive foul line, takes the shot and gets it to roll. Makes it 49-39 on Lee's famous recipe scoreboard. Elwer's got 21 to lead all scores. And there's a foul, and it looks like they're gonna get, gonna get Aaron Munter, the 6'2 junior on the foul, and that's Munter's third. That'll send Austin Meekamp to the line. Yeah, and, and, and as uh, well as Austin shoots the ball, from behind the arc, he does struggle from the foul line a little bit, 44%. Let's see what he does here. Misses the first one, so Jay's with a little life here, down 10 with a minute 52 to go. And two timeouts yet that they can use to stop the clock after a made shot. Second one on the way, and he knocks that one in. Austin Neekamp gets one out of two. He's got 11 on the night to lead the Flyers, and it's 50-39 with 1.47 to go. Here comes Elwer, kicks it back out. Schwinnin from the left side, in and out. Rebound comes down to Ranley. Ranley gets tied up by Elwer, and they're going to say Elwer on the foul. Great look right there for St. John's, and Nolan Schwinnin rattled in and rattled out. Chance to cut the lead to eight, but we're going to go to the other end and shoot the double bonus. So you said it earlier, we were going to come down to foul shots, and with 1.39 to go, the Flyers sitting pretty up 50-39, and Ranley at the foul line. First one on the way, goes off the mark. You never, this game all night, Marion Locals led most of the night, but I've never felt like the Blue Jays were out of it. They've hung around, hung around. They were down, I think, 16 at one time, but they've, you know, chipped away, and here we are at 12. Agree totally, Danny. If they get a bucket here, and a timeout, they can set their defense. There's Grothaus from the right side. He knocks it in. Landon Grothaus with a huge three, and he makes it 51-42 with 1.30 to go. We're going to keep it right here. So here are the Jays with a little life. Grothaus finally gets five for the second half, held scoreless in the first half, Dave. Come alive a little bit, but you can tell he's not at 100%. And that's been the, the challenge as we look at the scoring column for the Blue Jays. You have Cameron Elwer with 23 but no one else close to double figures. And that second person typically is Landon Grothaus, who averages 12 a game. They've held him to five. Big bucket, as you said right there, a three. So see what they can do here. Minute 30, down nine. Give it, it a shot. Get into, yep, get into your full court. This is a strength for St. John's. Their full court man pressure against the taller, longer flyers. They're a little quicker. We've seen it thus far in the fourth quarter. They turned them over a little bit. They got to continue to do that right here. Season 18 of the Sports Report continues Friday night. Join Patrick Kamler for a full hour of the most comprehensive basketball coverage around all season long. Friday's at 10 on WTLW. So the Flyers get the ball in. Pressure from the Jays, 125 to go. This is Hess who bring it across the timeline. Well, he goes back, and there's double team in the out top. Meekamp loses the ball. Jays get the turnover. Here we go, 114 to go. This is Elwer. They bring it up against Ranley. Kick it over to Schwinnin. Schwinnin in the corner. There's a dribble drive. Loses the ball. Kicks it back out. Three ball on the way. Off the mark. Rebound comes down. Ball's loose, and the Jays corral it. This is Grothaus. He stopped, goes back into the lane. This is Elwer up top. Dribble drive on the left side. Elwer misses the shot, and they're going to say Neekamp's on the foul. And if that's against Neekamp, that's five. It may be on Ranley. Let's wait to see. They're going to say that's on Neekamp. And Austin Neekamp has fouled out of this game with 49 seconds to go. Two things happen in that possession that, again, um, Coach Guttemuller not real pleased on the foul call. But they really made St. John's work to get that shot. It really made them work hard. They, they took a lot of time off the clock, and that's as important as anything right now if you're a Flyer fan. Elwer gets the first one. <laughs> Would you say, Dave, he, he, is it a quiet 23? <laughs> he, just, he just scores. He just scores. And he's got 25 on the night, and he is <laughs> smooth as silk. 
Entering the game now for the Jays, number 12, Austin Muncher comes in, and Luke, or Nolan Schwinn, excuse me, will take a seat. Yeah, Elwer's an 86% free throw shooter, and I bet it's higher than that in the fourth quarter. Usually you see it go the other way with that. He's so good down the stretch from the line. So Eink is fouled coming down the floor, and it looks like they'll get Cam Elwer on the foul with 43 seconds to go. Flyers up 51-44. Crucial free throws here for Brandon Eink. They are double bonus, but he is a 53% free throw shooter. They need these. And he knocks that down like he's been there all day. 52-44 on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. So Brandon Ike's got nine on the night. Nine big ones and a chance to go into double figures with this shot right here. Second one on the way. And he nails that one. Coach Guttemuller is going to take a timeout with 43 seconds to go. We'll step aside for our final timeout. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. We're back here at Marion Local High School with 43 seconds to go. The Marion Local Flyers are trying to put their clamps down on a Midwestern Athletic Conference Championship, and they lead 53-44. You talked about Cameron Elwer with 25 points now. He's had to work hard for all yes. of those. Oh, you're right. Because, and I think we'll see it on this possession, even though Marion Local is going to be man-to-man, -man, there will be two guys focused on Cameron Elwer if he looks to shoot. The guy guarding him and the guy closest is going to rotate over. Elwer gets it to Grothaus. Grothaus goes baseline, kicks it back out. They'll go back to Grothaus. And Brandon Eink isn't even watching the ball. He is face guarding Cameron Elwer. And as a result, Grothaus has a driving lane, no help there, and draws the personal foul. They're going to say the foul is on Mitchell Ranley. Grothaus will go to the line to shoot two with 31 seconds on the clock. Flyers lead 53-44. He knocks in the first one to make it 53-45. So the Joe, or excuse me, the Jays inching closer, but are they gonna have enough time here with 31 seconds to go? Yeah, the clock is definitely a friend of the Marion local Flyers right now. Second one on the way, and he gets that one to fall. Grothaus has seven. They're gonna take out Aaron Munter and entering the game now for the Jays. Number 23, Drew Boggs back in. Tate Hess will trigger it in underneath the basket. They'll go back to Hess, and Boggs fouls him immediately with 29 seconds to go. And if you're a Marion local Flyer fan, that's who you want to have go to the free throw line. Tate Hess, 75%. So Hess will go to the line. He'll shoot two in the double bonus. 29 seconds to go. Let's the first one fly. And like he's been doing it all night, knocks that one in, and they get 54-46 on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. Marion Local's going to keep two guys on the free throw line. Thought they might bring everybody off on the second free throw. Second one rolls in. Makes it 55-46. Hess has 14 to lead the Flyers. So there's Elwer, a little up and under, and he knocks that one in like he's been doing all night. He he's had got to go through four <laughs> Marion local Flyers to get that bucket. He's got 27 to lead all scores, 55-48. They're going to get a foul out top, the foul on Brandon Eink. And Nolan Schwinnen's going to pick up the personal. Nolan Schwinnen, you're right, with the foul. But yeah, Elwer faced the guy he was guarding, or who was guarding him, and then another guy flew at him at half court, another guy flew at him at the free throw line, and another guy helped down at the bucket, and he still got a layup. So Ike lets the first one go, and he misses that one. Leads at seven with 12 seconds to go. And you're in a situation where you don't want to foul St. John's. Sure, sure. But you still want to make him work for a bucket, and he was able to slice and dice to the rim. He gets the second one to fall, makes it 56 48. Here comes Elwer with 10 seconds to go. He'll cross the timeline. He goes in, takes it up left hand, and it's blocked. Tate Hess with the emphatic block. And <laughs> 
Mesher gets the rebound, and he's going to be fouled immediately by Landon Grothaus, and that will just about do it with four seconds to go, and Marion Local leads 56-48. And Tate has saying something to Cameron real quick there in a friendly way, a sportsmanship way, probably something along the lines, hey, I'm the senior, you're the freshman. <laughs> I know you're well, taking over this league, but uh, not quite yet. Not yet. <laughs> we'll, we'll give you the keys to the car next year. Yeah. <laughs> so Marion Local unloads the bench, and the home crowd gives their players a standing ovation as they realize that Marion Local will be your Midwestern Athletic Conference champions. Outright. Congratulations. Absolutely. Congratulations, Coach Guttemuller and the Marion Local Flyers, as they will be your champions in boys' basketball, just like they were champions in football, <laughs> in girls' basketball. <laughs> and that will wrap it up. The Marion Local Flyers win this one 58-48. Dave, your thoughts on Marion Local securing an outright title? Well, what's so impressive about it is you're, you're winning the conference in a game that you have to in order to do it outright. If you lose, you share it with your opponent, the Delta St. John's Blue Jays, and you have to do it without your big man, Jack Kanapke. Yeah, they had an opportunity to prepare for this a little bit because they didn't have him last Saturday as he injured his shoulder Friday in the Versailles game. But still, non-conference versus the conference game, just a great, great accomplishment for this Marion Local Flyer squad. And then Delphi St. John's, they came in here, they battled. They battled. And again, the freshman, 27 points. But Landon Grothaus also fighting an injury. They weren't able to get their second leading score going tonight. Give credit to the Marion local defense. They kept everyone else under double digits. That was huge for the Flyers picking and it up was this really, win as Yeah, well. it was really impressive that they did all this without Jack Kanapke. Back to Delphi St. John's. What does Coach Elward take away from this loss heading down tournament trail? Well, again, they've got to have that balance, and they've gotten it from Grothaus. And here in the second half of the year, they've really gotten it from Austin Munter, or Aaron Munter as well, excuse me. Aaron was unable to get, get shots off against the taller Austin Niekamp tonight. He's not going to see that very often, sure. and he's not going to see that here as uh, they are part of the Elida district. There aren't six, eight, six, nine guys in that particular district this year. But got to have him be more effective on offense as well as the other starters can contribute more uh, to the cause for Delphi St. John's too. That'll wrap it up from Marion Local High School. The Flyers win 58-44 for Dave Bowen. I'm Danny Holbrook and our entire WSN crew saying we'll see you down the tournament trail.